Songwriting is a perfect tool for artists to purge their demons. The same can be said for listeners who have gone through similar experiences. It's a beautiful thing when something awful has happened to you and you find a song that tackles that subject matter unabashedly and without shame. It really cuts to the core and helps the listener feel less alone. And the power of that is unmatched. This is the magic of a song, part one. Slater Kinney is an indie rock band that formed in Olympia, Washington. The founding members were Corinne Tucker, formerly of the Riot Girl band Heavens to Betsy, and Carrie Brownstein from the band Excuse 17. Slater Kinney's self-titled debut album was recorded in one night on a vacation they took in Australia, and the record is a masterpiece front to back. However, the most powerful track on the album by far is the album Closer, appropriately titled The Last Song. The song starts off slow with a fuzzy, lo-fi atmosphere, accompanied by a sinister bass line. Carrie Brownstein opens up the song with the first verse, which goes, The opening line sets the tone for the whole song. The statement couldn't be more blunt or direct. This is about somebody who really hurt her, and she's not letting them off easy. This is the first and the last time she will ever write a song about them. As she carries on, her tone of voice becomes clearer, more potent, the volume picking up. The distorted and lo-fi sound perfectly complements her tone and the messages she's trying to convey. And the lyrics become increasingly more visceral in the second verse. I can't think, I can't breathe, I can't even close my eyes to dream. I need you out of me before I turn into you. What's really outstanding about the song is that she never specifies what this person was like as an individual. And normally that would be a problem, but in this context, she doesn't have to. Everybody who has experienced abuse knows what it's like to be emotionally manipulated and gaslit to the point of feeling like they have to apologize to the person who is responsible for causing them all this pain. In the following lines in the second verse, Brownstein admits that she was naive and makes it crystal clear that this time she realizes it wasn't her fault. Last time. Once the song gets to the bridge, the drum patterns begin to pick up, increasing in speed up to four times their previous BPM, and Brownstein uses repetition to drive her point home. The chorus is where everything the song's been building up to comes to a raging climax, and Brownstein unleashes these angry, primal screams, the volume of the drumming and distortion pedals picking up alongside her. It's a cry for freedom, and a plea to violently gouge this person out of her life forever. What's even more powerful is the way she reduces this person to nothing just with her words, just as they did to her for a long time. She doesn't cite any specific experience, like you forgot to call on my birthday, or I saw you do this at a party, and her tone isn't conflicted whatsoever. 
because she's not willing to give this person the satisfaction. She's over it, and she's putting the final nail in the coffin by unapologetically voicing her contempt for this person and what they did to her. She really meant what she said, and the fact that the band made this song the album closer makes it even more powerful. 